This is what we arrived to. Water and rocks everywhere. Total destruction. Yeah, the process of slowing this river down was very tricky. We had to get everything right because this river does get very, very overwhelmingly powerful. And you've got to be very cautious. Uh, we laid this out in uh, a week, figuring out what we wanted to do. And then we built it. Here's an image of how raging and this, this river can be. It can get absolutely crazy. We can't be deceived when we don't have bad weather. We need to plan for the bad weather. When it rains up in the valley, there's lots of water that comes down. It is so aggressive. Here's why we really needed the wall. You can see how much uh, damage this is doing to our gardens. Okay, so this is our river. It has changed drastically. Very different now. And uh, these big boulders, they end up getting thrown here from the uh, power of the river. And uh, it's actually created a great big area over there. Yeah, the river itself has created this big buffer zone. The river went from three meters to six meters wide. And uh, this zone here is like a vortex. The water circles here. And that circling motion slows down the water incredibly well. And these rocks, they are so big now that they're very hard to move by the river. So these are gonna be here quite permanently. And what we've done is we made the main river goes this way and our secondary river we had to barricade it and I'll show you. So what we've done is we've built this wall up. So the river can't get through here and we've uh, limited the access to how much water and how much square footage we're allowing into our secondary river which helps us protect protect our land behind the wall so i'm going to show you what it looks like we lost so much soil in this event we lost trees and plants and our walkways it was an absolute disaster our garden was spectacular at this moment now we're still trying to get it back to its former glory the river's energy was overwhelming so this is the entrance we have a couple rocks poking into it so that really limits how much water can get in here because we had way too much water before so the water comes through there and then it goes down here and we've uh, barricaded both sides. This rock is probably 20 tons. It's enormous. It goes all the way back to there. This will never move. And we've built these walls up just in case the river gets really pressured. Okay. Okay, so the river comes through here. We have the walls built up on both sides. What really gives us a lot of strength is having all this plant material built into the sides. And uh, it really helps, especially with these walls that don't have any cement. They're full of life and they uh, get really strong. We had these two rocks as uh, stepping stones to come across here, but we moved them to the side because they were blocking the river too much. As you can see, we have all these plants unfolding here because they're getting their roots into the water. I think this, this water goes, you know, maybe two meters to both sides. It feeds all the plant roots, but just by having the secondary river in here, So the idea I had was we had so much water pressure here, like so the river was so powerful that I came up with the idea to have a double S, like even there's a slight S, but here it goes and it hits this wall and slows down. It slows down a lot when you hit, the water hits these side walls and even hits this, this wall. And this is going to be a sauna and that's our swimming pool. And as you can see,
this double S really slows down the water a lot and it allows the water to, to, to go into the land on the sides. And this, the swimming pool in the second basin, this basin here, the main purpose of this basin is to gather all the organic matter it can. When we shut the river down to clean this out, this is so full of rich topsoil, it's fantastic. That's why we have this second uh, basin here to catch all the sediment uh, and topsoil. Even when you have these water falls, that slows down the water immensely as well because it's so, uh, the drop down makes the water travel this way instead of forward. So it really slows the water having different levels in your waterfall. So we're pushing the water through the middle and it sort of stirs in here and slows down again by having another drop off. And what we've noticed is every little area has a different type of deposit material. Like this area here is always full of leaves. And we use these for the garden. It's fantastic to have these areas where everything gets caught. When we have really heavy storms, this fills up with so much material for our garden and it makes it possible for us to use this material instead of bringing it in. And these plants, they thrive on the water's edge, they have no problem. And again, they help a lot with retaining the, the soil. So it makes a big difference having this water going into the land and feeding everything with moisture because the roots, they go all the way down into this area here and they're constantly being fed with moisture, which makes a huge difference. This area here is very interesting. I pruned everything yesterday. But this area here has so much organic matter when there's a heavy storm that it's like up to 10 to 12 uh, wheelbarrow loads of great, great topsoil. And what happens here, is this goes through and it goes back to the main river. So we have this corner cut off, the main river goes that way and these two join up. And uh, I like to have these planters in the river because they also sort of act as a, a barricade. This area gets filled up with a lot of uh, organic matter because of this planter being here. And again, these waterfalls, um, and these waterfalls really slow down, slow down the water immensely. So this is how it empties out into the main river again. But all this area here, it allows us to plant a lot of plants that like moisture. So we can have a, a lot of stuff growing incredibly well. But this bamboo loves being here because it's getting wet feet from both sides. There's another little river on the other side. So by slowing down this river and making it multi-levels, it, it, it creates interest and it also creates this uh, ability for the water to get really deep into our land and it makes a very big difference uh, when we do that. So that's our river, our secondary river and that was a little tour of It's very interesting, it doesn't even rain and we get these floods. So the rain is up higher and it just must be pouring up there for this to bring down this amount of water. And this water is so black and loaded with topsoil, it deposits in our secondary river. 
If the locals would stop down, cut, stop cutting down all the trees, this wouldn't happen. The dirt wouldn't get into the river so easily. And this harmless river can turn into a monster in a matter of minutes. And during the dry season, this river is incredibly innocent and looks like it's harmless, but boy, that can change very quickly. So we had to prepare a lot of things to make it accommodate for these massive floods. On the other side of the property, this lady had this idea to cut down all the trees. And I still, to this day, can't understand why she came in here and cut, out, cut down all these trees because now her um, land is 12 meters over to the side and it's still coming down so it's going to go another five meters at least so on this side we have a little beach now we've gained about 12 meters so this is a very clear message what happens when you cut down all your trees uh, this lady cut down all her trees and this river is just pounding her land it just moved over another i would say five meters four meters and uh, there's no stopping this so if you're going to cut down your trees, remember there's a consequence to that and uh, this is it here. She's uh, losing her land by the minute. It is insane. She had some huge trees. It was a, I would say that was a 50 foot tree. She cut it down, laid it along the side of the river and uh, every Every little thing that's grown here is a tree stump. She's ruined it. This is insane. And uh, boy, she's paying the price.